Madison Bumgarner is coming off his worst outing of the year, allowing a season-high 11 hits on 7 runs in 3 innings against the Philadelphia Phillies. It's been a rough last few seasons for Baumgartner, who signed a huge deal with Arizona in 2019 and has been one of the worst pitchers in baseball since that time. His poor production has been swept under the rug playing in Arizona, and not only is his contract a disaster, his Hall of Fame candidacy has become in question. Mad Bum was drafted number 7 overall by the Giants in 2007 and made his MLB debut in 2009. His first full season, though, was in 2010, and Bumgarner was impressive, posting a 7-6 record with a 3 ERA in 18 starts and was particularly good down the stretch. In the final month of the season, Bumgarner went 5-0 and and he carried that success into the postseason. In four playoff appearances, three stars, Bumgarner pitched 20 and two-thirds innings, allowed five runs, and in Game 4 of the World Series, threw eight shutout innings and a win. After two very solid seasons in 2011 and 2012, Bumgarner broke out and had the best year of his career in 2013, being named to his first All-Star game and finishing ninth in the Cy Young race. 2013 to 2016 were the prime years of Bumgarner's career and he solidified himself as one of the best pitchers in baseball. During those four seasons, he was named the four consecutive All-Star Games, finished top nine in the Cy Young voting each year, and became one of the greatest postseason pitchers of all time. Bumgarner's 2014 postseason run was the greatest performance by a pitcher in playoff history. He threw 9 shutout innings with 10 strikeouts in the wildcard game and picked up a win in the NLCS, but in the World Series, he took it to another level. He threw 7 innings in Game 1 and 7 shutout innings in Game 5, picking up the victories in each of those games. Then, only 3 days after throwing 117 pitches in Game 5, he came back in Game 7 and picked up a 5 inning save to clinch the World Series. That was Bumgarner's forte. When the lights were the brightest, he was his best. Even in 2012, he struggled during the NLDS and NLCS, but in the World Series, threw 8 shutout innings in the win. His World Series numbers altogether are video games like 36 innings, 0.25 ERA, and of course a three-time World Series champ. Anyway, from 2017 to 2018, Bumgarner was still posting good numbers, but not as good as the years prior, and he dealt with injuries in both years. In 2017, he only made 17 starts due to a shoulder injury and a rib injury after falling off his dirt bike. In 2018, he only made 21 starts after breaking his finger in spring training and missing the first two months of the year. 2019 was his contract year, and Bumgarner had a solid season, but there were signs of concern going forward, and it ended up being his final year in San Francisco. Bumgarner was allowing the highest exit velocity on balls in his career. Opponents were hitting the ball in the air more often, and they hit 245 against him, the highest rate since his rookie year. The Giants were also skeptical of his shoulder going forward, and an extension never came close, and on December 17, 2019, Baumgartner headed the NL West division rival Arizona on a 5-year, $85 million deal. His tenure in San Francisco was nothing short of spectacular, and he solidified himself as one of the best pitchers in San Francisco Giants history. Across 11 seasons, he posted a 3.13 ERA, collected 119 wins, and helped the franchise win three World Series. The success he had with the Giants hasn't carried over to the Diamondbacks, as since joining Arizona, he's regressed big time, and it hasn't been talked about much because playing in Arizona doesn't get national baseball attention. His first year was the shorter in 2020 season, and although it was an odd year, it was quite concerning. In nine starts, he had an ERA of over six, his whip and hits per nine were career highs, his strikeouts per nine dropped a ton, and his fastball velocity was down three miles per hour. Bumgarner's fastball velocity increased from 2020 to 2021 and his stats somewhat improved, but they were still way worse than league average and a sign of concern going forward. Year 3 of the deal has been abysmal and has only gotten worse as the months go on. August has been the roughest month of them all and Bumgarner has allowed 27 runs in 26 innings and his ERA this month is above 9. In prior years, Bumgarner's bread and butter have been his fastball and cutter, and those pitches are getting hit harder than ever. 
Against his four-seam fastball this season, opponents are hitting 320 with the 585 slugging percentage, and versus Cutter, opponents are hitting 303, and the whiff rate on the pitch has gone way down. Although Bumgarner has pitched 14 seasons in the majors, he's still relatively young. He turned 33 years old last month and still has time to turn things around. After all, he's younger than guys like Jacob DeGrom and Clayton Kershaw, but it's clear he needs to change the way he attacks hitters because right now, his strategy isn't working. He isn't generating any strikeouts or swings and misses, and hitters are hitting better against him than ever before. Over the next two seasons, he's owed $37 million, and it's a possibility he's released by Arizona after the season given his performance since signing the contract. It's sad to see such a dominant starting pitcher decline so fast, especially a guy who was on the path to Cooperstown, but based on his recent production, however, that's become in jeopardy.